Alright guys, for this video we'll be working on the uh, October-November or Winter 2017 Paper 3. Okay, so um, let's get started. So let's move uh, look at uh, Task 1 Evidence Document. It says open the file 173 evidence.rtf. So I'm going to open this file. Right, in case you guys need to uh, look for the working files, you can go to a website called IGCSE Center. Right, you can find all the past year papers there. Anyway, so let's open 173 evidence, okay? And then the first thing I'm going to do is uh, make sure your name, center number, and candidate number will appear on every page of your evidence document by placing these details in the header. So I'm going to double click on the header here, and I'm going to view ruler so it's easier for me to uh, see my alignments and all that. Okay, so I'm going to select ruler, and I'm going to put my name, please type your full name, and then my candidate number. So, save this as a word process document in your work area with the file name 173 evidence followed by your candidate number, for example, 173 evidence 9999. Okay, so I'm going to save it, file, save as, I'm going to browse, I'm going to save it in the same um, folder where all my working files are. But before I do that, I'm going to change it to word document. Okay, because a word document is actually more um, effective when it comes to the file size compared to an RTF. Okay, so I'm going to save it. Click OK. Okay, so let's look at task number two, spreadsheet. We are, do, we are working on Microsoft Excel, so I'm going to minimize this. So you work for the Cozumel Tourist Board who use a spreadsheet to analyze data about cruise ships, passengers in the Caribbean, use the most efficient methods in your work. Open and examine the files 173cruise.csv and 173location.csv in a spreadsheet package. Well, spreadsheet package means Microsoft Excel. Lah. All right, so let's open cruise. And as well as location. Okay. So it says save the file 173cruise as a spreadsheet. So file, save as. I'm going to browse and I'm going to change this to Excel workbook. Okay, please do not save as CSV because if you do that, all your formatting, all your functions, your print layouts, and all that will be gone because a CSV, CSV file is essentially a text file. Okay, so I'm going to save it as cruise followed by your candidate number. So cruise 6969. Okay, so in your cruise spreadsheet, place a text cruise ship analysis left aligned in the header of the page. So I'm going to insert and I'm going to select header and footer. Alright, so left align cruise ship. Oh, crap. Ship analysis. Okay. Uh, place your name, center number, and category number right aligned in the header. So name. Center number and candidate number. Place the text last edited on followed by today's date. Today's date automated, the text at and then the time automated center aligned in the footer of the page. So I'm going to scroll down, go to the center of the page here, and then I'm going to say last edited on followed by today's date automated. So I'm going to go to design, I'm going to say, uh, select uh, current date. Please do not type the date, okay? At and then the time automated, so current time automated. So click somewhere else, boom, the date and time appears here. Okay, so I'm going to save it. Now, let's look at number two, merge cells E2 and F2. So E2 and F2, so I'm going to merge and center. Format this merge cell and cell G2, so this and this, so that the text is center aligned in a black 16 point sans serif font. Uh, 16 point. Calibri is already a sans serif font, oh, oops, 16, um, black, 16 point sans serif font, all right, there you go, and I'm going to apply the same uh, formatting, so I'm going to select the format painter here, and I'm going to click on G2, so it looks the same here, all right, now merge cells A1 to H1, so A1 all the way to H1, I'm going to merge and center it, Format this uh, this merged cell so that the text is right aligned. So I'm going to right align the text with a red 20 point sans serif font. So red 20 point sans serif font. There you go. It has a pale blue background color. 
pale blue. Yeah. Okay, there you go. In cell B4, enter a function to look up the name of the cruise ship's destination from the content of the file 173location.csv. So, I'm going to resize everything first. I'm going to select the corner here. Control A does the same thing. Double click on the uh, column separators here so I can view the data properly. Alright, doesn't matter whether it overflows to the next page. Let's ignore that for the time being. So, basically, what the question wants is based on the D code here, you need to refer to the table here and get the location. And if it matches, whoopsie. And if it matches, check it back in the destination here. Okay, so the function that we're going to use is called VLOOKUP. V stands for vertical, so equals to VLOOKUP. is going to ask you for four different um, uh, parameters here. So the lookup value is what value are you going to use to find out more um, information for the destination here. I'm going to use ANT to find out more information so that I can place it in the destination column, right? So I'm going to put in a comma, table array. From which table are you getting this extra information from? I'm getting it from the other file here. From all the data here. All right, so comma, column index number. So from which column am I getting the information from? I already have the data from the first column but I need the data from the second column, right? Now, since it says call index num, it has to be a number, so I'm going to put in column number two because I want the data from the second column. Pull in another comma, and I want an exact match. So I select false, and I'm going to hit enter. Right, I'm going to resize it so that you can see. I'm going to double click to use the field handler to apply the function to all the other cells here. Okay, now number five. In cell F4, enter a formula to calculate the average number of visitors a month for this destination rounded down to the nearest visitor. So, equals um, visitor for this period, divide by month. But it says rounded down to the nearest visitor. So, round, down, and I'm going to say to the nearest, I'm going to put zero because you can't have um, a number of visitors with decimal places, right? That's going to be weird. So, there you go. And I'm going to use the fill handler to apply it again. Number six, in cell H4, enter a formula to calculate the percentage change in the number of visitors between 2014 and 2015. So, I'm going to get the um, difference between 2014 and 2015 over the total number of 2014 so that I can find the um, increase or uh, the decrease in the number of visitors, right? So equals to, I'm going to open my bracket because I need to do the division first, right? So 2015 minus the visitors for the 2014 period divide by the visitors of in 2014. I'm going to press enter. This is um, in decimal, but they need it in percentage, right? So I'm going to change it to percentage. And then I'm going to apply this to all the other cells here. All right, so that is question number six. So let's move on to number seven. Replicate the formula entered in step four to six for each destination. Oh, okay, I've done that already. So replicate the formula basically means you use the field handler to replicate it. That's it. Okay, so apply appropriate formatting to your spreadsheet. Now we've done, uh, we've applied the percentage uh, format to the uh, percentage change here. And I will also highlight the um, field names here and give it a bold. Okay, so save your spreadsheet, print the spreadsheet showing the formula. So I'm going to go to formula and I'm going to select show formula. Okay, now I'm going to resize everything because as you can see, part of the formula is hidden, right? So I'm going to make sure everything can be seen. It is in landscape orientation, so I go to page layout, I change the orientation to landscape. The row and column headings are visible. So I'm going to go to File, Print, Row and Column Headings. Um, I'm going to go to Page Setup here, Sheet, select Row and Column Headings. And the content of all cells are fully visible. Now, the question did not say that everything needs to appear on one page, so it's not necessary for um, us to, uh, to change it to fit sheet on one page. Okay, so I'm just going to print... Um, We're going to print to PDF, all right? 
So I'm just going to click print and then it's going to print. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not going to print it. Lah, okay. So moving on, look at question number 10. Print all of the spreadsheet showing the values. So values meaning not the formula but the value. So I'm going to go to formula here. I'm going to remove show formula. I'm going to resize everything to make sure it fits. And then um, the row and column headings are not displayed. So I'm going to go to file, print, and then I'm going to go to page setup, sheet, remove the row and column heading. And the content of all cells are fully visible. It fits on a single portrait page. Okay, so portrait, single, right? So I'm going to go to scaling here. I'm going to select fit sheet on one page. So everything fits on one page and I'm going to print. Alright, so move on to question 11. New data has just arrived from Barbados in March and the British Virgin Islands in April. Edit the, uh, the data in the spreadsheet to show these changes. Okay, we are at question 11. So this one, it says March 2015. Now since this is January to February, I'm going to modify it so that it is January to March. So month we now have three months because January, February, March, right? Three. And then there's 70,041 extra visitors. So I'm going to just change this into a function that is equals to this plus 70,041. Okay, do the same for the British Virgin Islands. January to April, four months, and then I'm going to get this and add it with 68,457. Okay, print all the spreadsheets showing the values again. Make sure that it fits on a single portrait page. Yeah, 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 the row and color. Blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to go to file, print. It's basically the same thing. Then click print. So all they need is for you to. Um, they need to see is for the changes to Barbados, uh, the month, uh, the period, as well as the um, visits, uh, the total visits here. Okay, so we are done with question 11, moving on to question 12. Now, for those of you who are practicing at home, it is very, very important that you actually print to uh, PDF, okay, so that you can see how your printout looks like. Now, let's look at number 12. In cell E24, enter a function to calculate the total number of visitors to all destinations in 2015. So, E24, which is here. So, basically, I just need to sum everything together. So, the function I'm going to use is called sum. It goes to sum. Open bracket. Select the data here. And there you have it. So, in cell E25, Enter a function to calculate the average number of visitors to all destinations. Same thing, but this time I'm going to use average. But there you go. In cell E26, enter a function to calculate the number of visitors to the most popular cruise destination in 2015. So, the more visitors to a location, the more popular it is. Right? So, here we need to use a function to find the highest number and to do that we use max there you go moving on 15 in cell i4 in cell i4 right use a formula to copy the value held in b4 so equals to b4 and it's copied over just like that. There you go. So replicate the formula for each destination. Done. In cell E27, enter a function to return the name of the most popular cruise destination in 2014. Eh, sorry, 2015. So E27. So basically what you want to what you need to do now is that you know that um, the total number of visitors to the most popular destination is uh, 14, what is this? It's a million, right? And this number actually corresponds to this number. Now, um, 
based on the data here, you know that um, the most popular destination is Cozumel, Mexico, right? Now, so the function to use is VLOOKUP again. Now, VLOOKUP. So what is the lookup value? This time I'm looking up this value to find the destination, right? So from which table am I getting the extra information from? I'm getting it from this table, right? So now the reason why I did not select here is because the lookup value is always matched with, with um, the first column in the table array. So if you select the data here, you will not be able to take a number and match it with uh, text. So that's the reason why. And then, because we are on the same uh, sheet, we actually need to lock this table. Okay, so I'm going to F for it. And which column am I getting the extra information from? Column 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm getting it from the fifth column. And I need it to be an exact match. There you go. Cozumel, Mexico. Okay, so save your spreadsheet again. Oh, sorry. Number 16. Place appropriate labels in cell D24 to D27. Um, what's this? Total visitors for 2015. Okay, I'm going to say average visitors. Oops, 2015. This one is um, total visitors to most popular destination, perhaps. Then, most popular destination. So print only um, 17, save your spreadsheet, print only sells D24 to E27, inclusive showing the formula, all right? So D24 to E27, inclusive showing the formula. So I'm gonna go to formulas, I'm gonna go to show formula. Resize it so that it looks good. Now there are two ways to do this. You can either go to page layout and set the print area and then go to print. Or you can say print selection. So it basically gives you the same result. Okay. Oh, the row and column headings are displayed. So I need to go to page setup, go to sheet and row and column headings. There you go. Okay, so make sure that you have entered your name, center number, candidate number on your spreadsheet, showing the values that you got done. Print only cells I4 to I22, inclusive showing the formulas. All right, so now I'm going to clear the print area. And for easy selection purposes, I'm going to hide the formulas first. Okay, it's not necessary, but um, you could do that. I4 to I22, so... I4 to I22, right. I'm going to go to formula and I'm going to show formula again. <laughs> oh my god, that's it. Okay, anyway, um, file, print, and I'm going to select print selection. Okay, there you go. Now print all the uh, all of the spreadsheet showing the values. Make sure it fits on a single page. The content of all cells are fully visible. Um, showing the values, right? So I'm going to go to formula and disable the show formula. Resize everything neatly and nicely. All right. Fits on a single page. The content of all cells are fully visible, right? So I'm going to go to file print. It did not say that it needs the row and column headings. I'm going to print active sheet, make sure everything is displayed. Page setup, I'm going to remove the row and column heading. Okay, now obviously it's too small. So let's try changing it to landscape. Much better. Okay, so print. Right, moving on. Question 19. Extract only the data gathered for three months. So, we, when it says extract or produce an extract, 
or interrogate the data, it's basically the same thing. It means that you need to use the sort and filter function. So I'm going to highlight the data here. I'm going to go home and then I'm going to select sort and filter and select filter. So it only wants data that is three months, right? So I'm just going to select three months. And then it says sort this data into descending order of percentage change. So largest to smallest. Print only this extract showing the values. Make sure that the printout fits on a single page. Content of all extracted cells are fully visible. All right. So I don't think they need this. So I'm just going to select this portion. Only this extract. So only this extract, right? So file, print. That's your data right there. And I'm going to select print selection. So that's your data right there. Then click print. Okay, we're done with um, data analysis. All right, moving on to question 20. Okay, so now we are doing web pages. I think I'm, it's safe to uh, close the Excel already. I'm just going to save it. Close. Okay, now new website is being developed. Yeah, at the design stage, you create a test plan. In your own words, in the identify two factors that need to be considered when designing an effective test plan. So evidence one, in your own words, uh, type two answers into your evidence document. So I'm going to open my evidence document, so evidence one. Um, okay, so number one is um, identify each um, element that need element each element that needs to be tested identify expected outcomes um, what else identify the target audience as well so I'm gonna just Put in more answers here. Oops. Oh dear God, it's not really a numbered list. Okay, and then um, the uh, corporate house style. Now, if you guys want more answers, you can actually refer to the marking scheme. All right, so these are some of the answers, uh, if I'm not mistaken, from the marking scheme, if I remember correctly. Okay, now number two, identify two methods of testing a web page. In your own words, this, uh, type two answers in your evidence document. So number one, I would say um, functional testing. So functional testing is testing the functionality of the website. Um, a web page, sorry, not website. Um, say, for example, whether the hyperlink works, whether the images... Um, actually um, uh, open uh, a new uh, a, a URL in a new tab and click on it um, whether the um, anchor um, anchor works and uh, whether the anchors place on the web page works and all that okay and then after that you have alpha testing as well or in-house testing okay so Let's move on to question 22, right? So you work for Hot House Design and you will assist training web programmers uh, in developing a web page to advertise the island of Cozumel. The web page and style sheet must work in any browser and use the most efficient methods. All color codes are in hexadecimal. as well. So create a new folder called HTML underscore 173. So I'm going to create a new folder here. HTML underscore 173. Um, locate the following files and store them in your HTML uh, Okay, right. Now let me sort them. These, um, Cozumel, I'm going to skip this. D, E, and then F, G, H, and then the CSS file, this one. Okay, so I'm going to chunk them in here. Take a screenshot showing the content of your HTML173 uh, folder and place this in your evidence document. Make sure that the folder name, image dimensions, all file names, extensions, and sizes are clearly visible. Okay, so I'm just going to open it like that. And um, I'm just going to click this and I'm going to change it to content. So everything, the uh, file type, the size, the dimension, the file size, 
and everything can be seen. So I'm going to take a wonderful screenshot here. So um, for you guys using Windows, all you need to do is press the, pre, uh, the print screen button. I need to go through this. So print screen, I'm going to go here and I'm going to paste it here. There you go. All right, if you are worried that um, the examiner might not be able to uh, see the information, you can actually crop it if you want to. Okay, so number 23, open the web page 173, kozumail.htm in your editor and in a web browser. So I'm going to right click and going to edit with expression web because this is the uh, HTML editor that I'm, I'm going to use. And then it also wants you to open it in a web browser. So I'm just going to double click it so that it opens in Chrome. Move this here. So carefully examine the web page and the images 173a.jpg and to 173h.jpg. Select the most appropriate image from 173a.jpg to 173h.jpg and place this in the table. Add appropriate alternate text to this image. So let's see. Mexico's cruise, uh, cruise ship paradise website of the Cozumel Tourist Board. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, place, uh, place image from step 23 here. Okay, so let's have a look at the images. Hmm. Okay, so this is definitely out because it's in landscape. So let's focus on the ones that are um, in um, portrait, right? So this file size is a little bit too big. And um, let's have a look at the dimensions here. So this dimension looks pretty okay. This is a bit too small. So these two are the most likely candidates here. Okay, so let's have a look at the file size. This is JPG, JPG. The size is 67.6. This is 21.2. Okay, so let's, let's have a look here. Uh-huh. don't really see a difference though. Okay, so I'm going to select the one that has um, the correct dimension but the smallest size. All right, so I'm going to place this here. Remove the heading. Measure this. 173G. Okay, so insert picture from file. I go to my desktop because that's where I chucked it. Select the G. Alternate text, uh, cruise ship, I guess. There you go. S fits snugly and nicely. Okay, so I'm done with 23. So the goal here is to find an image um, of which quality is pretty okay. It's not, um, the file size is not too big, and the resolution is not too big either. Okay, so this is um, the perfect fit. So let's move on to the next one. Evaluate in your own words um, your choice of image in step 23. In your own words, type your evaluation into your evidence document using no more than 100 words. Okay. The image was selected because um, the orientation is more suitable. The dimension of the image fits um, well into the cell and although the file size is small, there is no noticeable, is that how you pronounce it? Yep. There is no noticeable um, degradation in the um, quality of the image. Four marks there. Okay, so let's look at 25. Replace the text. Place your candidate details here with your name, center number, and candidate number. So I'm going to switch back here. Name, center number, and candidate number. Um, place a non-breaking space between the colon and your candidate details. So non-breaking space, meaning I have a space here. This is a breaking space. This is a non-breaking space. So add a title to the head um, section of your web page, which, which displays CTB homepage. So file, properties, 
title here CTB home page save now place the bookmark before the table at the top of the page so I'm going to just select um, the top of the table and I'm just going to press the up arrow until it cannot go up anymore so basically an anchor um, in Expression Web is called a bookmark it's the same thing so I'm going to go to insert bookmark I'm going to call it top I'm going to press OK. You can give it any name you want because the question didn't say anything. You can call it heaven or whatever. So I'm going to click OK. And because it appears in a paragraph, I'm going to change it to none. OK. However, the bookmark or the anchor is still there. How would you know that? If you go to code and you scroll all the way up, you'll notice that it's still here, but you can't see it. Okay, so using the text in the lower cell of the table, create a hyperlink from the text. Click on this link to return the user to the bookmark. So click on, create a hyperlink for the text. Click on this link. So click on this link. I need to link it back to the bookmark. So hyperlink, place in this document because I'm linking to a place in this document. Bookmark, top, I'm going to click OK. Create a hyperlink from the text CTB to open the web page. HTTP, triple W, hot house design, blah, blah, blah. CTB. So hyperlink. This time I'm going to go to existing file or web page and I need to type out the URL. Oops. House dash design dot co dot uk slash CTB. Okay, there you go. Create a hyperlink from the text email our design team to send an email to web design. Email our design. Oh dear God. Email our design team. There you go. So hyperlink again to send an email. So I'm going to select email address this time. Web design at hothouse design.co.uk with the subject my question. Click OK. Now moving on, attach the file 173st.css as an external style sheet to your web page. So Attach style sheet, browse 173 ST. Now, what does it mean by as an external style sheet? Now, link meaning I'm actually linking to an external file. So, if I select link, it means that 173 ST.css is an external style sheet. However, if I say import, it will become internal. So, since the question needs it to be external, I just leave it here and press OK. So, open the stylesheet 173st.css uh, in a suitable software package, which is also Expression Web. So, I'm going to open it in Expression Web. Now, add your name, center number, and candidate number as a comment to the top of the stylesheet. So, I'm going to put it at the top here. I'm going to go to Edit, Code View, Insert CSS Comment. The web page and style sheet must work in any browser and must use uh, the most efficient method. All color codes are in hexadecimal. Edit the style sheet. Make sure your style sheet contains no HTML, right? Uh, the style sheet must meet these sp uh, specifications. So heading style one. So this is heading style one. So since they have it here already, I am just going to modify the style. So the font is Arial. If it's not uh, not available, then Calibri. Or if these fonts are not available, the, the, the browser's default sans serif font. So which means I need to put in another comma and I need to type in sans serif myself. So color, red, no blue or green. So color, hashtag, red, ff, blue, zero, zero, green, zero, zero. It means red. Center align the text. So text align in block, center. I'm going to click OK. So that's done with H1. So paragraph style. So I'm going to create a new style. Make sure I remove everything including the dot because it symbolizes a class. And um, well, classes are actually not tested in IGCSA ICT. But anyway, so selector is P. Stands for par paragraph, fully justified text. So text align, justify. OK, apply. Web page background, set the image 173bg.jpg so that it is tiled, repeated, and overrides the browser's default setting. So, pages background would be body. Alright, so background image, I'm going to select 
173bg.jpg uh, there you go repeat repeat so it's tiled overrides the browser's default settings there you go apply and then table no visible borders cell padding 10 pixels background color for the table only with blue um, DD green BB red 99 Okay, so new style, table, so borders, um, no visible borders, so I'm not going to do anything here. Cell padding, 10 pixels, so I'm going to go to box here, 10 pixel cell padding. And um, background color for the table only, so background, color, hashtag. Red 99, blue DD, green DD. So it has to follow the sequence. Alright, so I'm going to go back here and see whether there's any paddings or not. Cell padding. Hmm. Okay, so padding this, this actually applies to the table. I'm going to do another cell padding, okay, but for cell. So I'm going to go to new style, I'm going to do TD box here. I'm going to put 10. Okay, because it needs the padding for the cells, right? So let me switch back. Ah, there you go. So I don't need the padding for the table. I'm going to remove this because it says cell. So cell is represented by TD. Okay, moving on. Save the style sheet in your HTML underscore 173 folder. Take a screenshot showing the content of the style sheet. Place this in your evidence document. Make sure that the file name is clearly visible. So I'm going to take a screenshot. Again, for you guys, print screen on your keyboard and uh, paste it into your evidence document here. Take a screenshot, so I'm going to paste it here. Right, again, if you want to crop it, it's really up to you. Refresh your browser, display the web page in your browser, take screenshot evidence of the web page and place this in your evidence document. Refresh. Boom. You. Okay, so let me try to zoom out. If it's a little bit too small, we might need to take two screenshots. Okay, I think that it's better we take two screenshots instead. Okay, so I'm going to go to print screen. Go back here. Paste it. That is the first page. And I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to print screen again. All right. And then take a copy of the HTML source and place this in your evidence document. So what is HTML source? Source means your HTML code. So I'm going to go here. If you're in design, you need to switch to code. So you need to select everything, copy it, go back here, and paste it here. Right. Save and print your evidence document. Make sure that you have entered your name, center number, and candidate number on your evidence document. So file. Print. Make sure that your name, center number, and candidate number are entered on your evidence document. So print out everything here. Alright guys, we are done with this paper. Thank you.